Welcome back. Good morning. So today we will study the MG1Q. So we yesterday we studied the GG1Q, right? We so GG1Q has renewal arrivals and IID service times, with arrival process and service times being independent. The MG1Q is a special GG1Q where the arrival process is a poson of some rate lambda okay service times are as before some vi independent of arrival process so the plan is for this mg1q we can derive some closed form expressions for uh, parameters of interest such as the uh, expected duration of the busy period, expected waiting time, expected uh, number of customers in the system and so on. Okay. So, the agenda is we will have we will derive expressions for expected busy period duration, expected busy period is enough, Ex uh, expected uh, waiting time and expected number of customers in the system. And we will also derive an important property uh, about the statistics seen by Poisson arrivals. Actually, we will need this need, we will need this part the third bullet to calculate the expected waiting time all right the second bullet about expected waiting times and expected customers we will do only for fcfs okay uh, so for the expected waiting time there is a famous formula called the pk formula which we will derive okay pk formula gives the expected waiting time in an mg1q fcfs mg1q Okay. Now, so in a GG1Q, we already know in general we know that from Littles, we know that L bar is equal to lambda W bar, right? For any queuing system, I mean any queuing system which renews at arrivals to empty system satisfies this property, right? And similarly, L Q bar is equal to lambda W Q bar, the lambda times the waiting time average waiting time is equal to average number of customers waiting in queue right so this is true very generally however for ggm or gg1 queues we know that this relationship holds but neither l bar nor w bar is easy to characterize explicitly okay we just know that they are related like this okay for an mg1 queue it turns out that you can explicitly calculate w bar and w q bar and therefore, you can apply little to get L bar or L q bar. Okay. So, little remains true, but uh, neither of these average occupancy or nor average waiting time is easy to cal cal calculate. Okay. That is the issue with GG1. MG1 you can get closed form expressions. Okay. Now, what is it that is so special about an MG1 q uh, which helps us calculate uh, the quantities such as L bar w bar and all that. Okay. So, this is the part about statistics seen by Poisson arrivals. Okay. So, if you take any some general queuing system, okay. let us say a single server queuing system, let us say gg1 queue and I have some let us say renewal arrival process to the queue. All right. Now, the question, so this is the topic on statistics seen by arrivals. Status seen by arrivals. Question, do arriving customers see the same queuing statistics
seen by an external observer. Okay. So, there is some queue that is running let us say a gg1 queue that is running. Okay. As an external observer I am watching the queue evolve. Okay. Then I am able to calculate some average system occupancy L bar. I look at 1 over t integral 0 to t L tau d tau like yesterday or I calculate the average waiting time or average system time or whatever I want all right and I note it down I am an external observer all right. So, let us say I know L bar I have been I have this gg1 q has been running for a very long time I am able to calculate this time average or ensemble average for that matter okay, for nice nice queuing systems these two are equal right. So, let us say I am able to calculate L bar right. Now, the question is does an incoming customer to the queue now I am no longer external right. If I am a customer who is coming to the queue can I expect to see the same kind of a statistics meaning that the do I face the same average delay or the same average number of customers in the system as an external observer that is the question I am asking is the question clear. So, is the statistics seen by an external observer which is just L bar or whatever or W bar same as the statistics seen by an incoming customer you are no longer extrinsic to the system you are coming in as an arrival as a part of the renewal process right which is arriving to the queue a priori this is not it is not clear right because I am a customer coming to the queue I am a part of the renewal process that is driving the system right and there is no a priori reason to be straight away believe that the statistics seen by my incoming uh, arrival is the same as the that is seen by an observer external observer. So, generally answer is not true So, example I will show you an example very very simple example you can make a make up any number of example let us say you have a g d 1 q okay. meaning what is g d d means deterministic the service times are okay. So, I am going to take the service times v i is equal to 1 for all i. Okay, it is always each customer takes one unit of time to get served okay. and let us say my arrival process I have to calculate let us say I have to characterize so, let us say I am going to take x i's are uniform in 0 to 1. Okay. So, each internal arrival time is a uniform random variable meaning that so each time uh, I pick a number between 0 and 1 uniformly at random and that will be my x i. Okay. So, all the inter arrival times will be t lie between 0 and 1, okay. but service times are deterministic. So, in this situation uh, so what is really so v so expected v which, which is clearly 1 right what is lambda what lambda is if I make yeah so this is so I think this will work for me okay so now I have lambda is equal to 2.3 uh, if I do this what happens so I have so I have arrivals which are so I think it is uniform the inter arrival times are uniform in 1 to 2 all right uh, anyway so this in this case each customer takes one unit of time correct to get served and inter arrival times are between uniform between 1 and 2. Okay. So, now what does uh, an incoming customer see see let us say I am an incoming customer all right. So, I come in at some point when was the previous arrival more than one unit of time ago right. So, if I come in at some point the previous arrival would have been at once one in one or it between one and two instance of time before two uh, two units of time before right and that customer would have surely left why because the service time is only one right. So, when I am a customer coming in the previous customer would have arrived let us say time 
seconds ago or whatever right and that person would have completed and left by the time I come in. So, an arriving customer always sees an empty system correct. So, if you just plot this uh, okay, at 0 there is an arrival let us say we always take an arrival at 0 right. Uh, this guy will leave, leave after so I am just plotting busy periods okay, uh, one unit of time. Okay. The next arrival will happen between 1 and 2 units of time let us say let us say it happened here correct. This guy will take this guy will take another 1 unit of time right but the next arrival after that uh, will take you know will take another one unit at least one unit of time after this you see what I mean and so on. So, an incoming customer never waits you see clear. So, the average number of customers seen by an incoming arrival in the system right. So, the average number of customers in the system seen by an incoming arrival is what 0 I never see anybody I think the system is always empty right, but is the system always empty not at all right, but average system occupancy is what average system occupancy seen by an external observer is lambda over mu right that is the load on the system is not it. So, my so the duty cycle of whatever I have drawn is 2 by 3 correct correct. So, that is the surprising result. So, what is the moral of the story even in a very simple system I just cooked up an example right right here. Uh, the statistics seen by an incoming arrival can be wildly different from L bar. L bar here is lambda by mu right it is the the average number of customers in the system is also the average number of there is only one customer at any given time. So, it is the average number of customers in the server which is lambda by mu correct. So, here in so for if you take any gg 1 q. So, this is the issue the statistics seen by an incoming arrival need not match what you calculate as L bar. I just showed you an example where L bar is not the same as the statistics seen by an incoming arrival. So, which is what makes calculating the you know characterizing the gg 1 q uh, L bar or w bar explicitly difficult ok, but for an m g 1 q this is not the case ok. So, the moment you have Poisson arrivals to a queuing system ok, you will always have the Poisson arrivals see the same statistics as an external observer ok. So, Poisson arrivals to a queuing system always see average behavior ok. So, the issue is this fact this issue does not arise for Poisson arrivals in fact there is a property known as Poisson arrivals always see time averages ok. And this has a, an appetizing uh, short form pasta ok Poisson arrival see time averages or ensemble averages it does not matter ok. Uh, so, the issue is that Poisson arrivals always see uh, average uh, statistics seen by an external person ok person who is external to the queue ok. So, this is what happens so in, a, in an MG1 queue you have Poisson arrivals ok and that helps you calculate you know the average waiting time and all that ok. So, if you look at so, let us say an MG1 sort of a system right where there is Poisson arrivals. So, you look at probability that 
I want to look at this that L of t equal to n, L of t is the total number of customers in the system at time t. So, I am looking at the probability that L of t equal to n given that there was a uh, there was an arrival a t t plus delta is equal to 1. Okay. So, what am I saying? So, I am looking at so there is a queuing system that is evolving right. I am looking at some particular time t t plus delta and I am telling you that there is an arrival in that small interval t t plus delta. I am going to look at the statistics given that there was an arrival at t t plus delta what is the probability that there were n customers in the system. Right. So, the number of customers at uh, in the system L of, uh, L of t is equal to n will be because of all the you know these arrivals would have come with their own these are Poisson arrivals coming in with their own file sizes right. And the number of customers in the system at time t right depends on all the arrivals and the file sizes of the customers who arrived before t. So, I am going to calculate this probability of L of t equal to n given that I have a Poisson arrival coming in at at the time t, time t t equal t t plus delta. Okay. If I show that this is equal to the probability that L of t equal to n unconditionally, then I have shown this property pasta, right? Meaning that given that there is an arrival coming in now, the probability that there are n customers in the system is the same as the probability that there are n customers in the size system at time t regardless of whether it is an arrival or not clear. So, this is so this is like probability of a given b right. So, I can write this as probability of a t t plus delta equal to 1 given l t equal to n probability of equal to n over equal to 1 a t is the arrival process the Poisson process all right a t is n t plus 1 in all our notation. Okay. Now, this is great. Okay. So, now look at this term right let me look at this term. What is the probability that I have an arrival in t t plus delta given that there are n customers in the system at time t. Now, this l t equal to n right the random variable l t is only a function of all the previous arrival instances and their file sizes right. So, l t equal to n is actually independent of this a t t plus delta right. See this Poisson uh, after all this Poisson arrivals has independent increment property right. So, whether you have an arrival at t t plus delta or not is independent of all the previous arrival instance and by the construction of the m g 1 q the arrival process itself is independent of the v i s the service times right and L of t is only a function of previous arrivals their arrival instances and their v i s right. So, what we can say is that the event of having an arrival in t t plus delta is independent of uh, yeah, how many customers you have in the system at time t right. So, what is the so this is what is the model therefore right this conditional probability just becomes equal to so these are independent right. So, this just becomes correct it is like the unconditional probability. So, that cancels with that. So, you get correct is this dependent on f c f s or any such thing it is not dependent I have never used f c f s anywhere I have just used independence between I have used the independent increment property and the fact that v i's are independent of the arrival times. Okay. So, this is what pasta property really is Poisson arrival c time average behavior right. Uh, so, it is a sort of a I have it is not just that Poisson arrival C T a time average behavior time average behavior they see the statistics seen by an external 
uh, it is not only do you they see the averages are the same, the statistics the entire statistics are the same right. So, that is a key property okay. This is true in uh, great generality okay. There is no I mean this does not has depend on single server, this does not depend on FCFS or such thing okay, it is true very general. Now, using this pasta property we can calculate the expected waiting time and all that okay. So, first let us calculate uh, expected expected busy period duration for MG1. So, you go back to this picture from yesterday right. You had uh, you had plotted this remember this sort of arrival curve this is D of t and this is A of t and then there is another busy period and so on right. Now, we want, so we said that in a GG1 q in general, we had this, so this is a renewal duration right. Uh, so, when you have the next arrival to the empty system, you have so this guy is again, a, these are renewal durations right. I want to know what is the expected duration of a busy period right. So, what is my first busy period? So, a typical busy period is like this right, it's, this is a busy period correct with me and this is a idle period. I want to calculate the expected duration of is busy periods and idle period. Okay. How do I do that is the question. Now, this expected duration of the idle period is easy to calculate. So, here so my system emptied uh, at this point right and then I am waiting for what to come in a poisson arrival to come in right. The poisson arrivals are memoryless right. So, what is the once my system empties how long does it take for a Poisson arrival to come? It is an exponential with parameter lambda correct. So, this idle period is easy, easy to calculate okay. So, uh, let me let me calculate this right uh, okay expected. So, let me call this busy period uh, B 1 and this idle period I 1 all right and there, there, there will be like this will be B 2 and I 2 right and so on. Now, I have expected I 1 which is the same as any of the expected idle period is what 1 over lambda right which is basically just x bar arrival process uh, expected uh, arrival duration expected uh, inter arrival duration right. Now, do I know see I also know for an MG 1 q what is the fraction of time actually for any GG 1 q I know this what is the fraction of the time the system is busy. I did little uh, little theorem for the server alone right and said the, the fraction of the time the server is busy is lambda by mu correct. So, I know this what is the fraction of time the server is busy I expected B 1 over I am just taking the first ok they are all IID. This should be equal to 
lambda over mu correct. From this I can get expectation of B okay. So, you can rearrange this guy can you do this for me please what do you get expectation of B s uh, I get expected B 1 times this is just rho right. Can you tell me please? 1 over mu, is not it? Is that right? Yeah, so expected B is equal to 1 over mu minus lambda, I think. Correct? Is that right? Great. Okay. And the expected uh, renewal, so expected. B1 plus I1 also I can calculate is simply 1 over mu minus lambda plus 1 over lambda, right. This is the expected Sj from yesterday, right. This is equal to expected Sj, where you know Sj is the uh, sum of the Xi's till the first renewal right. So, from here, but by walled this will be equal to x bar times expected j, where this is the j is the index of the first arrival which is an MD system right. So, from here I can even calculate expected j right. So, this implies expected j is equal to uh, can you help me now 1 over this should be a dimensionless quantity obviously mu, mu minus lambda, mu minus lambda uh, is that all there is nothing else correct ok. This is the expected number of so this is the expected j right. So, j is the first index which sees a empty system and expected j minus 1 will be the expected number of arrivals during a busy period ok. So, the expected number of arrivals during a busy period will be expected j minus 1 ok. So, all this you can easily calculate for an mg 1 q. So, the key issue here was how did we manage this? This cannot be done for a gg 1 q. So, which of this is true for gg 1 q? See this equation out, out here is true for a gg 1 q just that is just little right little theorem on the server. This is not true for the gg 1 q the first equation is not true because when somebody left right the time to the next arrival is not memoryless right it is some residual time that we cannot easily calculate correct. So, that is a complicated matter, but for mg 1 q this issue does not arise ok. So, expected busy period duration can be easily calculated ok. Likewise, uh, we can calculate uh, expected waiting time in Q for MG1 FCFS. See, what I said earlier is uh, true generally, it has nothing to do with FCFS right. It is true for FCFS, but it, it can be anything the picture I have drawn is for FCFS, but what we have really used is little theorem which is generally true and that under any service discipline the moment I complete system empties the time for the next arrival is exponential that is always true no matter what this uh, what the service discipline is right. But now I am going to calculate expected waiting time in a queue for MG1 ok. So, I am going to denote u of t as the waiting time of customer at t ok. Waiting time meaning time I wait before I get into service right. So, I have this mg 1 q ok there is somebody at the server let us say right 
and then there is a whole bunch of people who are waiting okay and then i i am looking i am uh, the, they have this arrival coming in at time t okay how long do i wait this customer wait before i get into service this customer gets into service right see this u of t consists of two parts okay so what all do i have to wait for so i i come in at some time t let's say this u of t the waiting time before i get into service consists of two components first of all when i come in there's already somebody at this service okay that person will have to complete his service and then get out right which is the residual time of the so it is like residual service time of customer in service plus then i have to wait for yeah there are there are see i am doing fcfs right i have to wait for all the customers in front of me but not in service to finish their service right so i have to wait for the vis of all the guys in front of me but not yet entered in service okay already in queue okay so i'm going to say so let's say this number of customers let us be let this be called lq of t this is the notation i'm using right lq is the number of customers in uh, who are who are waiting in the queue so i can write u of t as r of t sorry uh, equal to r of t this is the residual service time right this guy has another r of t amount of service left so he is half eaten so to speak right the guy in when i come in the guy in who is being served now half some portion of his is eaten right so r of t is remaining okay plus but the people in the service their service times are all iid they are the usual v's correct so and how many of this do i have to sum lq i of lq lq of those i have to sum lq of these vi's i have to sum right so i can write this as sum i is equal to 0 to uh, lq t minus 1 vnt minus i that's that right so vnt so the person coming in at time t right uh, uh sorry so nt is so i am coming in at time t right how many arrivals have come before me n of t arrivals have come right n of t arrivals have come so this person the uh, person who's just ahead of me will have a uh, service time vnt correct n of t is a, see at time t n of t arrivals have occurred right uh, and so vnt plus vnt minus 1 plus dot 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 how many lqt right that many terms i have to sum right so this is my uh, relationship now i want to calculate the average of u of t right average u of t will be average waiting time of customer at time t right so uh, you can calculate either uh, time average or ensemble average and in this kind of a nice queuing system you they will be equal okay so what can i do i can write expected u of t equal to expected r of t plus expected minus i okay the clear 
So, I have to calculate, so in order to calculate expected u of t, I have to calculate that these two expectations, right. What I really want is not just expected u of t, but the steady state uh, as t tends to infinity, right. So, I want I have after a long time I want to know what the limit of expected u t is or time average, I have taken ensemble average, you can just as well take time average, okay. Now, uh, which of these two is easier to calculate you think? This is residual time, right. Actually, you know how to do both, okay. This residual time uh, has something to do with, so there are all these uh, customers which are you know getting service and leaving, right. And when I come in, there is a person who is getting served, right. So, the remaining service time of that person will be like a residual time of a renewal process. You see what I mean, where the, uh, the V i's are the service times, okay. It is a little bit like calculating the residual life of a renewal process, okay. So, this is somewhat like residual life of the V i process, okay. That we know how to calculate, we draw all these isosceles triangles and you know and this is actually even easier. Uh, that is because, actually why is that easier? Uh, well, okay, the V's are IID, okay. And the, the, the question is this, are these random variables V's independent of uh, the LQ's? Think about it, of the LQ random variable. See, LQ is the number of people waiting at time t, the system at time t, which is a function of all the arrivals that have happened so far and all the departures that have already taken place, right, correct. Now, these VIs are of course, independent of all the arrivals, right. And these VIs are also independent of the departures that have already taken place, because those VIs are independent anyway of these VIs, right. So, you can argue that LQT is independent of the V i's of the customers in service, okay. Is that clear? So, you can get a, this will just boil down to, uh, what will that boil down to? Expected L q t times expected V, okay. So, uh, we will continue this next class, but uh, you see where this is going. You have one residual life term to manage, which will have some isosceles triangles pictures to be drawn and calculated. And the next term has expected number of customers waiting in queue times their service expected service times expected V. Now, what is L q of t? <coughs> it is the number of customers in queue seen by a Poisson arrival. By pasta property, this LQ, LQ of t will be the average number of queues, average number of customers in the queue. See, LQ of t is the, uh, you see what I mean, right? The customer incoming arrival sees time, uh, seems time, time average statistics, right? So, this LQ of t can be related to WQ of t using uh, lambda little's theorem, right? and that is how we will proceed, okay. So, we will use pasta property, we will use Little's theorem, and we will use residual life calculation to get the waiting time in the MG1Q. Okay, uh, we will proceed the next class.